Okay, that last one was a short, candid conversation, so I'm going to continue with a new one here. And this uh, next thing that Sonia mentioned is uh, related to what we just talked about, about as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. The next question that, uh, that Sonia asks is, how do you treat narcissist unbelievers? Now, I didn't know what a narcissist was. I had to look it up. The dictionary definition is a narcissist is someone only interested in themselves. So how do you treat unbelievers who are only interested in themselves? Well, there are more and more people like that now. Uh, really, all unbelievers are only interested in themselves. But when I say there are more people like that now, what I mean by that is it's more obvious now. The more uh, the world falls away from Christ and the prince moral principles found in God's Word, the more evident uh, narcissistic people are. See, all unbelievers are narcissistic. They only care about themselves. But if you've got some morals built up, what your sin nature will do is it'll work with your conscience with those morals to try it to well it'll make you exceeding sinful Romans 7 says but there will be people who try to obey that conscience instead of using the witness of the conscience to say I'm a sinner I need God's imputed righteousness I need God to save me most people will say oh well I can do some of the conscience I can be a good person as long as I try I'll be okay and so you got a lot of unbelievers who use the morals that are built in their conscience and they try to obey it themselves or at least have the appearance of obeying and so most people have in their conscience the idea that we need to at least be respectful of others if not serve others at least um, not at least try not to do bodily harm to other people that's pretty much ingrained in consciences even today and so unbelievers will attempt to uh, again all unbelievers are going to be selfish all they care about is themselves but they're going to attempt to appease others the big thing is like in a marriage or in a relationship you know you got to live with this person and you know they think differently than you and so most people including believers still try to get their own selfish way but they try to appease the other person by making them think that they are looking out for them so that the other person doesn't complain that you're not considering me you're not loving me that type of thing and then it goes out to society but to a lesser extent as well in a business relationship you know you're getting something from that other person their business or or a product or whatever it is so then you try to be nice to that person when you don't really care about them I mean your selfish inner inner man if you're an unbeliever would rather just knock him over the head and take the product itself but you know you get in trouble for that and you feel bad because you go against your conscience of not at least respecting someone else and so then you would end up you end up um, you know treating them nice but inwardly you don't care anything about them I mean let's be realistic here now if you're a believer that can be different because Christ can live in you but I'm talking about unbelievers and so but today since more and more people are getting away from the morals of the Bible and they're thinking we'll just do what feels right to me the book of Judges ends with every man did what was right in his own eyes um, in the book of uh, not the book of in the Genesis 6 in the days of Noah it was the same thing and God ended up destroying the world when it got to that point I think we're getting closer and closer to that uh, right now which is why I believe the rapture is coming within my lifetime uh, but I, I could be wrong We've had ish. Uh, we've gotten to this point before in this world. It could be another thousand years. Who knows? Things can change. But you do have more people living by the standard of I do whatever is right in my own eyes, and as a result, then they 
have the appearance more so that they're only concerned about themselves. That's why you got these selfies. When I was growing up, a selfie didn't exist. You took, you had a camera to take pictures of others. You didn't take pictures of yourself. And now, that's all they do. Oh, I'll take a picture of myself here. Take a picture of myself there. It's all about me, 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 me. So you've got more people who, like I say, all unbelievers are narcissists. All of them only care about themselves. But it's more obvious today. So how do you treat narcissist unbelievers? Uh, you treat them... You treat all unbelievers exactly the same. Um, when I say exactly the same, I mean your, your uh, view of them should be the same. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, Henceforth know we no man after the flesh, though we know Jesus Christ after the flesh before. Henceforth know we like him that no more. What it really means is that what the world does, because their spirits are dead, all they have is their flesh, is they judge people exclusively on the flesh. This person is a good person because he feeds the homeless. We're at, and so that's a good person. An unbeliever would say that. But a believer would look at it and say, why does he feed the homeless? And then you find out, oh, he does it because he is having to do community service or he wants to look good to the church. So what that means then is that no, that's not really a good act. It's just a him working out his own pride or out of compulsion because he doesn't want to go to jail, whatever the reason is. But you see that the reason is not Christ living in him, it's some other fleshly motive. So then the believer would say, well, that person feeding the homeless is not doing a good deed. They're still in sin. But the unbeliever would say, no, that's not a sinful act. That's a good act because they're helping other people. So the unbeliever looks at it from a fleshly point of view and says the person feeding the homeless is doing good. But believers look at it or should look at it from a Christian point of view and say, why are they doing that? And if it's to share Christ in them, okay, that's a good thing. But if it's to look good to the church, well, then that's a bad thing. And it's just, it's just as much of a sin as it would be to uh, get drunk, for example. Your perspective in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, Know ye no man after the flesh henceforth. What it means is that believers should look at everybody and, with, say, and ask the question, Is this person in Adam or are they in Christ? If they're an unbeliever, they are in Adam. They are in the flesh. If they are a believer, then God has reckoned their flesh to be dead indeed unto sin, and their spirits are alive unto Christ. 1 Timothy 2.4 says, God's will is for all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. So if they are in Adam, my goal is for them to be saved. If they are in Christ, then my goal is for them to come into the knowledge of the truth. So if I've got a narcissist unbeliever, what that means is this person is not saved. So my goal is for them to come into the knowledge of the truth. So I need to treat them, I'm sorry, my, the, my goal is for them to be saved. They're not saved, so my goal is for them to be saved. So I need to treat them working toward that goal. That's all that really matters. Now, yes, I want to, now, then what that's going to involve is living peaceably with them. And that's why Romans 12, 18 says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. God wants you to live peaceably with all men because you're more likely to reach somebody for Christ. If I'm always arguing with people and always getting them mad, when I'm not going to be able to show them that they are a sinner, that Christ has saved me and given me eternal life and made me a, a good person now in terms of uh, who I am in Christ. And so 
they need to believe the gospel, trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sins. If I'm getting somebody mad and yelling at them and not living peaceably with them, they're not going to believe that. They're going to say, well, you're a hypocrite. You're just as bad as me. Um, why should I believe this gospel? That's not good news because it hasn't saved you. We're both uh, at each other's necks here. So, uh, that's why Romans 12, 18 says that. If you live peaceably with all men, now they still may not believe, but at least you have a chance where they can say, wow, this person is different than me. Now they can justify and say, well, they're really doing this, and so they're not really any better than me, or, or uh, they're, only do they're only being nice because of this, or whatever their justification, and most people will do that. But the point is, if you at least live peaceably with all men, then you may have the opportunity to give them the gospel for them to be saved. And so the way you treat narcissist unbelievers is the way you treat all unbelievers is that you try, and all of them are narcissists, is you try to get into the place where they recognize their sin and they uh, then look for the solution and you give them the, the gospel of trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sins. And, of course, how you go about that is going to differ by person. Uh, but still, it's uh, the, the, for, the groundwork is living peaceably with all men. And then when you, you just, not that you shove Christ down their throat, because God gave every man a free will, and they're not going to believe just because you want them to. It's, they need to see Christ in you. So if you live peaceably with them, that's a good start. And then you just let that sound doctrine work through you. And then when they notice it, then you've got the opportunity to say, this is why I'm different. Here's the change. It's Christ in me. And here's how it all works. You need to, that we are all sinners. And I am too. But Christ saved me from my sin. And he's changed my life because he lives in me. And you just need to trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And as atonement for your sin and then Christ can live in you too and then you'll be a better person too. Um, so how you treat narcissists and unbelievers, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with them and when you succeed at that and they see the difference in you, then you may have the opportunity to share the gospel with them so they will be saved. Thanks for watching.